Hi, my name is Crystal and I work at the Whitehall branch of the Columbus Metropolitan Library. My pronouns are she, her, hers. And welcome to our Teen Spotlight. This spotlight will focus on what can be a really sensitive topic to talk about and that is mental health. We here at the library want to support you in being the best version of you and now more than ever it is so important with the COVID-19 pandemic happening in our lives, everything has been turned upside down for us. So I've invited local community youth agency Huckleberry House to join us on this conversation. I have with me today Erica, who is a licensed social worker and is their counseling services manager. And she's also joined by Ray, who is their um, community engagement specialist. I'm just so happy to have them here with us today and look forward to this conversation. And now I would like to take a moment and have Erica and Ray introduce themselves and tell us a little bit about Huckleberry House and its role in the Columbus community. Yeah, so um, I will go ahead and start. My name is Erica and I am in the counseling program with Huckleberry House, like Crystal said previously. Um, so essentially Huckleberry House has been around since 1970, helping um, support young people and families throughout Columbus and making sure young people and young people in particular have a safe place to go during times of crisis or housing instability um, or when they're facing mental health um, crises. Um, so two of the programs that we provide to help support young people and families is our counseling program, which works with young people 12 to 23 um, in age, and we help support in a variety of ways, whether it's a specific, specific mental health diagnosis, um, everyday life stressors that a young person might be experiencing through school, work, family dynamics, um, or just in general family counseling as well to help work through any issues in the home setting. Um, and we are community-based programs, so young people and families have the option to come in to our office um, for support, but we also travel out into the community and meet young people in their spaces, like at home, at school, the libraries, um, wherever is most convenient and they feel most comfortable receiving services. And we also are offering telehealth services right now due to um, the ongoing uh, COVID-19 health crisis. Um, and the, another program that we run out of Hot House is our Transitional Living Program which is for young people 17 and a half to 23 years old that are experiencing unstable housing. Um, and that can be in a variety of ways. It might mean that they're um, you know, couch hopping from friend house to friend house without a um, permanent housing situation. Um, it might be that they are uh, living out where in the, on the land, so in the shelter, um, maybe living under bridges, wherever their housing situation might be. Um, and in that program, we provide them with a, an apartment for 18 months. Um, so supportive housing, which they're assigned a counselor, a, th a case manager, um, and we have the offices staffed 24 seven for just additional support. Um, and during that time, we work with them to address any barriers that might be preventing them from living independently on their own, while also helping them build the skills that they need to maintain their own housing once they leave our program. Um, so then I guess I'll let Ray take it and explain the other programs. Yes, thank you, Erica. Hi, everybody. My name is Ray, and I am our community engagement specialist. And so what that means is I work in our youth outreach program. Um, and doing outreach pre-COVID, um, we were in the schools, in classrooms, in rec centers, and really just out in the community. The goal is to reach young people where they are at um, and getting them connected to resources, whether that's our counseling services, our um, housing programs if they qualify, and our crisis shelter. Um, and so our crisis shelter is another program for young people 12 to 17 years old. Um, and that program is a 24 hour shelter. Um, so if young people don't have anywhere to go um, or there's conflict in the home and home is not safe um, and they just need somewhere to go, they can come to our shelter at any point in time. Um, and so we do have a safe place project in place to make it more accessible for young people. So if they are out in the community and they can't find a ride to our crisis shelter, we can send a ride to them. Um, and that's by them going to any of our safe place locations. So right now that includes any Columbus Public Library, as you may know, um, any White Castles, any Donatos, and any fire station in the community. Um, and so it's really cool to allow young people that 
that safe place at all times. Um, and when they get to the, our shelter, they have a safe bed, there's toiletries, there's clothes if they need it, they're fed three times a day. And they also are linked to counseling um, and case management to help with their program or with their situation. And the goal is to return them back home or to the next safe best option. Um, so those are crisis shelter and our outreach programs. And I kind of do work within both of those. Wow, thank you, Erica. Thank you, Ray. We just started and already so much good information shared. Uh, I actually have been familiar with Huckleberry House prior to our discussion. And so it is just so great to hear how strong Huckleberry House remains in the Columbus community. It's really just amazing all the work that's getting done. And I like how we've already mentioned the Safe Place program and how the libraries are a participant in that as well. So it's already a great connection. So leading into our first question, a lot of people talk about wellness nowadays, which you know includes like social and physical health, but mental health is a part of wellness too. And so if you could just take a moment to tell us a little bit about what exactly is mental health and why is it so important to care about? So mental health can be a little difficult to define just because it includes so many aspects, but um, essentially it is our emotional, psychological, and social well-being, um, and our mental health can impact how we think, feel, act, um, while also impacting how we handle stress, relate to other people in our lives, whether at school, work, even within our own family, um, and how we make choices. Um, and so it's important because it affects all areas of our lives, whether it's our educational or occupational um, our social situations with like friends, relationships, um, our family relationships, um, and also our physical health. The physical health and mental health connection is so um, important. And so, and they, one, they go along with each other so well. Um, and if your mental health is not where you want it to be, oftentimes it can impact our physical health and vice versa. Um, and so with that, taking care of mental health is important because if we don't, it can impact so many other areas of our lives that we may not think of as part of our, just our overall well-being um, and being in a uh, space that we went to with our mental health. Erica, I really appreciate you trying to define as much as you can since there's just so much information and you know everyone has a different idea of what it all is and what it all means. So I do like the reminder of just you know how um, everyone's mental health experience is going to be different and no two people are going to have the same experience. I know I've observed both adults and kids being, you know, sensitive to talking about mental health and because it's so personal, you know, it can make it really hard to have a conversation. So this leads to my next question. What makes mental health so difficult to talk about? Yeah, so I'll chime in about that. And um, like Erica said, if we're talking about our well-being and um, kind of like our feelings and emotions and how we uh, react to stress-related situations, um, those things are very intimate and they're, they make us be vulnerable. Um, and so the stigma around mental health is, you know, in our society, we're taught like, I'm all right. I have to be all right. I have to be okay. We're not, it's, it's very new for us to start to recognize like it's okay to not be okay. Um, especially in a lot of our communities in the Columbus um, area and surrounding areas, it's it's not normal to talk about it in families and, and in your social settings. It's always um, better to look like you're okay um, and whatever that means. And again, it's not just like the physical um, or social, but it's also your mental and emotional health. Um, and so it's, it's tough for, and I tell young people this because we, Huckleberry House specializes in young people, but we work with young people in their families. Um, and so it's not just our young people who are not used to talking about it or reaching out when they need help um, balancing those things out in our life, but parents struggle with that, adults struggle with it too, because it is, it can affect us in our occupational lives or in parenting, um, but we're not used to talking about it. And that goes back generations. Um, so really recognizing the first step I always tell a young person to, you know, reaching out for help and, and getting counseling or other resources to help with your mental health is recognizing that it's okay to not be okay. And it's okay to address these things, even though they're hard. 
You made so many good points, right? I've seen it here in the library working with teens. Someone brings up something, you know, sensitive and sometimes there's laughter or, you know, some teasing that happens. And so I can see how it could be hard for teens to, you know, talk about mental health, um, especially with their peers, much less an adult, depending on, you know, what it's about. Um, so it's very personal. And to our viewers, you know, like Ray said, if you've ever felt like this, you are not alone. Um, and especially right now with the COVID-19 pandemic, so many people have been affected in different ways. Some people are, you know, adults and kids are experiencing feelings of anxiousness and sadness and feeling alone. Um, so leading to the next question, what do these feelings such as depression and anxiety look like and how do you know when it's time to reach out for help? Yeah, so um, again, like mental health can look different for everyone, but um, some of the common themes that especially we hear lately and with young people are talking about anxiety um, and depression and those symptoms can vary from young person to young person, but some of the more common ones um, when we talk about depression would be some of the more like emotional symptoms would be feeling sad. Um, sometimes it's actually can be feeling neutral, right? So just existing, like I'm not happy, I'm not sad, I'm just kind of here and I'm present, but I don't really feel a difference from day to day and in, in those um, the emotional range. Um, it can be isolating, so maybe withdrawing from family or friends or activities that you might be in participating in or have participated in, um, which they can also lead to uh, just not getting excited about things. So things that we might have enjoyed previously that we no longer find interest in or enjoyment in. So maybe after school, we go home and play video games with friends and that used to like kind of be a, a way to decompress or lighten up our day. And for now, it's just starting to be kind of a thing we do and there's no excitement about it, no enjoyment. It just feels kind of like almost like a task versus something um, that we look forward to. Um, and one thing with depression that a lot of people don't recognize that can be a symptom is irritability or anger. Um, so just uh, if you notice like a change in like just your tolerance for things and you're kind of like, like snapping more than you might have previously or just notice you're just in a state of just feeling, feeling irritable more days than not and things like that. Um, and then along with that, some of the physical symptoms of depression uh, you know, one is fatigue. So just always feeling tired, no matter how much sleep we get, no matter how much relaxation we have, just constantly from day to day feeling exhausted, um, not being able to sleep. So even though we're exhausted, sleep doesn't come easily for us. Um, and so it takes us hours to fall asleep, or we might fall asleep and not be able to sleep through the night and get up multiple times and things like that. Um, also just, again, kind of along with the fatigue, it's just the body feeling heavy and just feeling like we're moving slower, talking slower, um, and those things. Um, and then on the other piece that we hear a lot of right now is the feeling of anxiousness or anxiety um, with, with the way things are right now. And so for anxiety, that can look um, for, again, like the emotion, like the mood changes um, can be just noticing that there's more stress or worry about things, whether it's about school, about um, our health, our family's health, um, and sometimes that worry can be understood of like, you know, things are very stressful right now. There is going to be more worry than what we might have experienced um, previously. But if it's like, you can't shut off that worry and you just constantly feel it all day, every day and nothing that you do or say or nothing that anybody else says to you makes that worry kind of decrease in things. Um, along with that, again, sometimes with anxiety, there's the irritability piece which um, because of that worry, just kind of like taking over our mind, we don't have as much capacity for other things. So then we get overwhelmed more quickly, which then can kind of just lead to like almost like a short circuit and it comes out in like irritability or frustration. Um, there's fatigue as well, just from where our minds never tend to shut down. Our bodies don't really get any rest because it's constantly like on tense and on edge. And so that leads to physical and emotional exhaustion. Um, and then again, sleep can be affected. Um, so difficulty falling asleep, difficulty staying asleep. Sometimes with anxiety, you might notice an increase in dreams. Um, and sometimes there's can be like bad dreams um, or just more vivid dreams in general. 
Um, and so if you notice um, any of these symptoms um, and you notice like an increase in them or just feeling in general overwhelmed or stressed to a point that it feels unmanageable and you don't know what to do with it, um, that is a time that you might want to reach out to whoever is your support person in your life, whether it's a school counselor, um, a coach that's on one of your sports teams, a teacher, a parent, an aunt, uncle, grandparent, whoever that might be in your life. Um, another thing to think about and be on the lookout for is if you notice having any thoughts of things would be better if I wasn't around, um, I'm just a burden to people, so I shouldn't talk to them. Um, any of those thoughts about just life in general, not wanting to be alive, feeling like things would be better without you. Um, if you notice an increase in those and not really knowing what to do with those thoughts too, that is definitely a time that to go to a support person and just kind of talk through those things and decide what's the best route for you, whether it is being linked with counseling or some other additional supports um, to help you through those feelings and emotions and make them become manageable for you. Wow, that was a lot. <laughs> Ray, do you have anything to add to this in your experience, the youth uh, outreach program? Yes, I did want to chime in um, and talk a little bit again about reaching out um, when necessary and, and how do we know when it's time to. And a lot of times when I initially speak with a young person and, you know, we're, they're just telling me about like whatever's going on in their life that is hard. Um, when we are, you know, nervous or anxious to reach out, when we, you know, have these um, just thoughts around, like, I don't know if I should because of X, Y, Z, like whatever we're telling ourselves is another reason why you should um, reach out for help because you just don't know. Um, and when you're dealing with a lot of, you know, emotions that may look like depression, it may look like, look like anxiety, it's not up to you to decide. Like as a young person, it's not up to you to just figure out alone, like this is what I'm battling, you know, and this is why things are hard. Um, someone is here to help you out with that. Um, and knowing that when we talk about counseling, because of the, st the, the real life st stigmas around counseling, thinking about it, like just reaching out with someone because you don't know and just asking so that you can get education on, on what you may be dealing with. And you can get some tips that you, you know, aren't using um, because you don't know about them. So just learning new tips that may help you deal with the things that are hard in life. Um, so taking that first step again, going back to realizing that this is something that's hard, but it's okay and it's necessary for my health and my well-being. I mean, what I'm trying right now doesn't Feel like it's working so if you do get to that place of kind of hopelessness where you know it's I mean I'm better here or like there, it's very neutral or you know you start having thoughts where I'm like I don't even know what the point of my life is those are very real thoughts um reaching out and saying hey I don't know what's going on I don't know why I'm feeling the way I'm feeling but what I'm doing is not working so do you have some suggestions um, and it doesn't have to be a quick process. Usually it's not. So a lot of times young people are like, I don't have the time or, you know, I just, I don't think it's going to work. And it's because of this idea that I need to have one conversation and then I'll have it all figured out. And that's not the way life works. And even uh, us as adults, we know that it's a process. Um, so being, you know, being able to recognize that once I reach out, it may not be a quick fix and that's okay. That's how life works, but you got to take a step at a time. So if you're in a place where you're like, I don't have the time or I don't feel like it's going to work, you're staying still, you're staying still, you're not moving. And so you're not progressing forward to your goals and the things that you want to accomplish in your life. Um, so again, just taking the first step to say, Hey, I don't know. What do you know that you could possibly tell me that may or may help not help me, you know? But if you don't take that step, you won't ever know. That was really a great way to summarize all of that, especially from a community perspective and the realness of it all when you're working um, with kids coming in or virtually now. Um, so that's just a wonderful perspective. And in regards to the next question, you both have talked a little bit about um, this already, um, but if a teen knows that you know they need help or notice a friend that needs help, um, how do they reach out for support from Huckleberry House? Um, I do just want to say that your website is 
so thorough and accessible. So just wanted to give a shout out to that as well. So initially, so with being the um, community engagement specialist, um, young people, adults, parents, counselors, librarians, um, anything of that nature can reach out to me directly. Um, so I can provide my number and email, but it is um, 614-927-0646. Um, you can call and, and or text that if you're a young person and just in need of help. Um, and then you can also uh, reach out to our crisis shelter. So our crisis shelter is 24 seven again. So it's not just young people, like young people, parents, your friends, if you're reaching out for a friend and you just have questions, it's a 24 line where someone's always there to answer um, your questions and see if um, the crisis shelter may be the best fit for you to come right away. Um, and so that number is on our website. Um, and again, you can check out our website if you have any questions, it's huckhouse.org. Um, and our number's on there, all of our different programming is on there. Um, so yeah, those are two ways that you can reach out if you just have additional questions um, and if you do want to use one of our programs. I just wanted to add, um, I know Ray mentioned it earlier too, but um, if you are noticing you need a safe place to go or in a crisis situation, you can go to one of the safe places, um, which are the Columbus Public Libraries, the Fi Columbus Fire Department, or in the Donato's Pizza places around town, um, and just go to them and say you need a safe place, and they'll kind of take over from there and make sure um, that you get to our crisis shelter um, and get like immediate assistance with whatever is going on that has led you to, um, to need a safe place to go. So that is another place. Um, if you are noticing that you need assistance, you can go to any of those locations to get to our crisis shelter. If um, transportation is a barrier, you don't have a way to get to us, so. There seems to be so many great ways to get in touch with somebody at Huckleberry House for support. I just love how accessible you all are. And even with getting someone there too, if needed, it's just so great. Um, we are coming to the end of our conversation. So my last question, I wanted to ask you both, what advice do you wish you could give all teens about their mental health and wellness? And more importantly too, how can we continue the conversation at home or at school? Yeah, I think um, kind of going back to what Ray had mentioned earlier, the biggest thing is it's okay not to be okay. And I know that that is said a lot, but you know, life is stressful in general, especially as a teenager trying to navigate, um, you know, still being a kid, but still transitioning into adulthood and the expectations that get placed on you and just all the decisions you're starting to have to make about what high school classes to take, what, what am I gonna do about school um, after high school? Am I, doing, am I going to college? Am I going to a trade school? Um, and then sometimes like just different family expectations that are placed upon you. Um, and then you add on top of it, everything that we've been going through this last year, last year that only makes it more stressful. Um, so during this time, you know, just remembering that it's okay not to be okay and that your, phys your mental health is just as important as your physical health. Cause like we said before, they're so connected to one another. Um, and so when you are reaching out to know as well that it is scary and uncomfortable, um, but with our programs, we meet you where you're at. So, you know, when you come in, we talk about what you want to talk about. We address what you want to address. We don't force things upon you. We don't try to push you past your comfort zone or anything like that. You kind of lead where you go with our staff. Um, and, you know, we want to make sure you get the most out of it. Um, and touch on the issues that are important to you and things not necessarily what we think about your life. You know, you, you navigate the whole situation and stuff, so you're in control of it. Um, and I think sometimes it can feel like when we go to talk to people about different issues or concerns that they're going to kind of take over or not, our voices aren't going to be heard. But just to remember that when you come to our agency, like your voice is the most important and you're in control of everything. Um, and I think with, you know, continuing the conversation, is, you know, bringing, maybe bringing up topics. If I saw this um, thing with the Columbus Public Library talking about Huck House to your parents and things and talking about why you think it might be helpful to you or what you, you know, what you may be going through. Um, and if it's uncomfortable to talk to your parents about it, maybe going to like a school counselor or again, like a coach or a teacher that might be able to help navigate the conversation with you um, to, you know, they, they can reach out to your parents with you and talk about why it might be 
helpful to get linked with services and things. So going to that adult or that friend that you trust um, and feel comfortable talking about it with and starting the conversation there and then relying on that support to help navigate the conversation further with others in your life that you might need to talk to in order to be linked with some of the services that might be helpful and things. So. Yes, and a chime off of what Erica said too, because I we're just gonna keep saying it. Um, it's, it's okay not to be okay. Um, and so recognizing that when we talk about, you know, it is tough, it is scary to reach out for help when you're not okay and you don't know what to do next. Um, and I wanna talk a little bit about why it is scary, right? So a lot of times when we're doing great, we're doing great in school, when our family's getting along, when we know what we wanna do next and decisions aren't super hard or confusing, we feel happy, we feel, you know, like motivated to keep going, we feel assured that, okay, things look like they're gonna, you know, work out for me. But when we are, you know, in a space where we don't know what's next, when decisions are hard, when family isn't getting along, um, we feel confused and we feel, you know, weak because it's like, what, what do I do next? I feel like I don't have the strength to move forward because I don't know. So recognizing that those, you know, feelings of feeling confused and, you know, feeling down and, and, and you know, feeling, you know, weak and feeling like you don't, you can't move forward. They're uncomfortable, you know, they're uncomfortable to be in and they're uncomfortable even more to talk about and to share with someone else, but they're necessary. And the reason why they are necessary and vital to you moving forward is that you are not meant to do it by yourself. That is why Huckleberry House exists. That is why all of our programs are here. We meet young people where they at. So wherever you are in your situation, wherever you are, you know, in your mental health space, whether you feel like you're doing okay or you're, you're doing the worst, we're gonna be there to meet you where you're at, to listen to your story and to see how we can help you move forward. Um, and so knowing that with moving forward too, a lot of times we'll reach out initially, but we'll stop. And the reason why we stop is because it doesn't look like what we think it should look like. And so I wanna encourage you as well that life is not gonna always look like what you think it should look like. Um, and so being open to you know new things, things that make you uncomfortable, things that you're not used to because growth only comes from that, that space of uncomfortable or of, of I can't talk of discomfort, sorry, um, or that space of, you know, just trying things that aren't used to what you're used to. But if you keep doing the same things, you're going to keep getting the same results. So being open to trying new things so that you can get new results and you can move forward to your life goals. Um, and we are here to support you along the way. I love the phrase that both of you mentioned of it's okay to not be okay. Uh, mental health and wellness is a lifelong journey, and we're all doing our best to not only survive, but also thrive. And so that ends our teen spotlight for this month. I want to give another huge thanks to Eric and Ray for joining us in this conversation. I know that this subject can sometimes be sensitive or tough to talk about, but it's very important, and I hope that you learn something new or some information um, if you find yourself needing any support in the future. And at this time, I'm going to quickly quick screen share our websites just so you have an idea of what to look for. So here is our website, and you'll go to columbuslibrary.org. You'll go down to services, click school help and you will find our um, Teen Spotlight plus homework help options as well. And then as Erica and Ray mentioned, huckhouse.org, and this is their website, and you can find all their information on here as well. A lot of great stuff. So I just wanted to share that so that we know what it looks like. Thank you again for joining us in this discussion. Please check out our website for more Teen Spotlights each month. Until next time.